Hey, welcome back to another episode of Understanding the Next Gen. I'm Jeff Baxter, the Next Gen Pastor at Mission Hills Church here in Littleton, Colorado. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so glad you have. Listen, parents, parenting preteens and teens and young adults is difficult today. There's no doubt about it. it. You might even think it's more difficult than it's ever been in the history of the world. And you might be right, I'm not sure. I mean, we, we're trying to give them freedoms and see them become responsible as they head towards being an adult. They have a cell phone that has access to the whole world, this little mini computer in their hands, that, which means they can have access to any person in the whole world, and that can be scary. Social media has totally transformed the way that they think and act. It's like this wild animal that's trying to be tamed, which is hard to do. So we give keys keys to the to kids with the most dangerous thing that they could possibly have called a car I mean what are we thinking as parents to give them keys to something when they're 15 15 and a half 16 years old and they we send them out the door uh, terrified that something's going to happen man it is hard to parent today it's hard to know what to do it's hard to know where the boundaries are it's hard to know what, what, how to how to get there well, I want to share some tips with you and then end today with the goal of parenting. So hang with me. What's the goal of parenting? So be sure to go back to previous episodes first, though. When we talk about adolescence, it helps lay a foundation to understand that the task of every child is to get through being a child into adolescence, become an adult. And they're working through identity, autonomy, and belonging. And you can go look at all the definitions at an earlier episode to help you understand where I'm coming from based on research. So here's some tips for you. Number one, very practically, are you ready? Number one, first, be the adult. Maintain control. Do not freak out about anything. Now I know some of us are more thinking, some of us are more feeling, some of us are more intellectual, some of us are more emotional. I get that as parents, we're all wired differently based on God's create creativity in our lives. But when a preteen, adolescent, young adult shares some news with you, do not freak out. Whether it's good news or bad news. So the bad news, so let's say for your 11 to 20 something year old tells you some bad news. Well, don't start screaming, don't start yelling, don't say things like, I can't believe you did that. But I've been guilty of doing that. Easier said than done, but trust me, don't freak out. Don't, don't do that. Maintain control, be the adult in the situation because you're the adult, they're not quite the adult yet. But on the other side, when they share good news with you, don't run crazy around the house going ballistic about that good news, whether it was a test grade, whether it was a goal they scored on the soccer field, whatever it was, don't freak out. Don't run out and get the t-shirt and the bumper stickers and put them on the back of your cars. Don't do that. You know why? Because you're gonna embarrass your child. I know your heart is to encourage them and like, I'm so proud of you, but don't embarrass your child because they're in the middle of this thing called adolescence. You're saying is my kid is better than your kid. Don't do that. It's probably not true. Uh, but don't do that because you, you're going to embarrass them, embarrass yourself, and you're going to hurt the relationship long term. Be encouraging, of course. Be uplifting, of course. But don't freak out. So don't freak out about the bad stuff that they may share with you, even if it's really, really bad. And don't freak out whether it's great news that's beyond reasonable. Because they're going to say to you, you're weird. You're weird. Dad, you're weird. I've heard that a million times. You're, you're weird. You're, you're acting weird right now, Dad. And from their perception, and their perception is reality, they, they might think you're being really weird or you're going to the extreme on this bad news. Second, number two, think long haul. Think marathon, not sprint. You've probably heard this before, but as your child, your student, your athlete is in the middle of the, the, the greatest and longest change of their lives, the second greatest, the first one was from about birth to four years old. A lot of change happens in a child from birth to about four or five years old. The second greatest change is during adolescence, where they might look like they're physically an adult on the outside, but on the inside in, in their brain development, and developmentally, they're not there yet. And you know that intuitively because you're watching it every day. 
Like they are a different person every day it seems. So think long haul. Think that you're part of this process, this journey with them and you might wish it was shorter but it's as long as it's going to be, probably into the mid 20s. It's running a marathon, not a sprint. Number three, no, third, be a student of your child. That may seem obvious, like, well, if anybody knows my child best, it's me. But you need to really drill down on this. Figure out what they like and don't like, what music they listen to and don't listen to, the friends they hang out with, even if you don't like their friends that they're hanging out with. Do everything you can to investigate. Be a reporter or a Sherlock Holmes to discover what makes them tick. And realize this, it could change tomorrow. Because they're still trying to figure out who they are. So today they could love country music and tomorrow it's rap. You don't know, it, it, this is the way it is. This is the process they're going through in adolescence. They're in the middle of growing up. So don't freak out. Just walk through that with them, getting to know them, finding out what they think about politics and religion and all sorts of things that are going on in the world today. Ask them questions just to figure out who they are. Be present with them. Fourth, say I'm sorry a lot, offering forgiveness and grace. Oh my goodness, I do this a lot in my home because I say the wrong thing at the wrong time or I raise my voice. We don't argue in our house, we just have some intense fellowship once in a while. Yep, that's right. So, so I'm applying this every single day to say I'm wrong. And I know as a parent, as a coach, as a teacher, you want that child to say to you they were wrong and they blew it. And they should. But you need to model it to them. Like when you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, you need to say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm going to keep working on that. And extend grace because that grace will bring them home one day. The law does not bring them home, friends. It'll always be God's grace. Fifth, be flexible yet organized. Be flexible yet organized. You probably already know this, but parenting is hard and it feels like you're adjusting on the fly all the time and, and you're trying to get the latest book to read or listen to the latest parenting podcast and, and, and then you feel overwhelmed and feel guilty that you're not doing as good a job as you can as a parent if you're trying to do your best. And don't do that to yourself. Just realize that you need to be flexible because every day is different when you're talking about a preteen and adolescent and young adult. Every day, from 11 to 20 something years old, it's, it's, it's like building a plane as you're flying it, as they say. And finally, sixth, uh, transition from parent to coach to fan. There's a time when you obviously lay the boundaries and you're setting this thing up as a parent for your child, and you should. And then you transition to a coach on the sidelines, sort of giving instructions from a distance, and when they ask for it. And then you transition to the stands as a fan, being the greatest fan of your child. And I'm walking that through right now with my children, having a, a almost 21, 18, and 13 year old. I'm watching that transition happening with all three of them. And it's exciting and terrifying all at the same time, but you need to realize you're gonna transition from parent to coach to fan. And that's natural and normal, but you wanna be there for them when they are an adult. And you wanna be a good friend and a fan of them. So how does this all fit together? Let me give you an action step uh, for this. And this was a little bit different today, action step. I wanna give you the goal of parenting. Are you ready? Uh, it'll be up on the screen, but also I'll, I'll say it to you. Here's the goal, here's the purpose of parenting to love in such a way that your child is convinced that he or she is fully capable of making a positive impact in the world for Jesus. Let me say that again. To love in such a way that your child is convinced that he or she is fully capable of making a positive impact in the world for Jesus. You're loving them unconditionally, not based on performance, not based on grades, not based on how they're doing on the athletic field. You love them sacrificially like Jesus did for us. And then their perception is reality, so they need to be convinced that they can make an impact in the world for Jesus. And the only way they're gonna know, you're going to know if they're convinced is by asking them. You, you ask them, do, do you know how much I love you? And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know how much I love you. But you just say that a lot during these years. So they're convinced. And they can make a difference for Jesus in the world, living on mission for Him. 
That's the goal of parenting. That's what we're all in this thing for. That's the end result of this daily grind that you're in called parenting. Or coaches and teachers come alongside to help this process work too. Well, until next time, thank you for tuning in again to Understanding the Next Gen.